Hello and welcome back to goldstocktrades.com. Today we have a returning guest with us, Garrett McDonald. Garrett is the CEO of Maritime Gold, which can be traded as MAE on the TSX Venture. Thanks, Garrett, for being here with us today. I know that you had some news today. The beginning of drill results are coming back uh, from Hammerdown. Uh, so could you give us an update on today's significant news and the beginning of the drilling program? Yeah, you bet. Thanks, Jeb, and uh, it's good to be back. Yeah, we've been pretty busy in Newfoundland and Labrador. We just started uh, getting results back from our 10,000-meter drill program at the Hammerdown Gold Project. So this is a former high-grade mine that was operated in the early 2000s by Richmond. And when they were running, they had a very high cutoff grade due to low gold prices. So a cutoff of you know, anywhere from 8 to 9 grams is what they used when they were operating. So we're looking at a, uh, a restart of the mine. And the drill program that we're doing right now uh, is to infill some of the, the zones that we have and to look for additional resources um, along strike and at depth. So, but the first few holes that came back uh, looked very good and, and similar to what we would expect on the eastern side of the ore body. Um, you know, we had a, a nice intersection rate of surface of eight grams uh, gold over 8.9 meters. So that would be within our, our planned open pit. So that's, uh, that's nice to see. And we'll have more results coming here over the summer as, as they come in uh, with two drills going at the moment. So we're roughly about halfway through the drill program. And uh, these are the first results released uh, today. You mentioned you have two drill rigs turning right now, Garrett. Yeah, we do. We've got one one drill rig doing uh, doing the remaining infill drilling that we that we're doing at the moment uh, for hammer down, and we've got another rig that stepped out a little bit away from the deposit on some new targets that we uh, that we like, and in areas that have never been tested before. Uh, hammer down just so everyone knows, is, is a deposit that was cut off by a fault at around 250 meters below the surface. So uh, dozens of vertical, narrow, high-grade veins that are, you know, cut off by a fault at that depth. And then the big upside and the potential prize for us, though, is to figure out where those veins uh, went. Are they shifted deep or are they shifted laterally? Um, so if we're able to find the, the other side of that deposit or the original ore body, you know, that would be a big win. So we have one drill uh, targeting those um, potential targets right now. And uh, that's part of our program this summer is to, is to test some theories we have on, on where that deposit may be located. And the, the other drill is, is expanding the, the current from the, the current development plan, the, the, which you came out with a PA uh, before. So you have one that's targeting below the fault and one that's targeting the, the development area. Yeah, yeah, that's right. So in any in any PA study, you often have some inferred resources. So we're we're doing the infill to convert them over to measured indicated before we we start the feasibility study. So that's what that one drill is doing. It's also doing some additional um, we're doing a grade control test, kind of in the core of the deposit, close spaced uh, drilling in an area probably you know seventy meters by by fifty meters by fifty meters. Vertically, which will give us a good, uh, good view of, of what the actual grade will be in that uh, in that area, and it helps us with the resource estimate. We can estimate grade over uh, over the distance of the veins that we have. So, yeah, so it will have a lot of good information out of this this 10,000 meter program. So, infill drilling, some grade control testing, and testing of new new targets that uh, that we hope to find uh, the rest of the ore body. And for investors that are new to the maritime story, um, it's this first came to my radar when they came out with the PEA uh, study, which I think was just a couple of months ago, and that showed about 70,000 ounces of gold a year, first five years, with a 1.5-year payback, which I like when it's ever below two years. That's great to see a payback. And a relatively small capex, you know, uh, when you look at projects in North America, and especially in Newfoundland this advanced and I heard I heard that you may be even starting the permitting process on the project uh, so there it is an advanced project am I correct 
Yeah, it is. Yeah, we have the benefit of of having you know, his, uh, you know historical operation there. So it was a high grade mine at one time. Um, it's located in a province that is very mining friendly. So there are nearby operating mines in the area with process plants. Um, you know, we're in Newfoundland and Labrador, which is a great place to work. Um, and we did actually uh, initiate our project permitting last week. So we've submitted our, our project description and that gets the, uh, the process started. We're still doing environmental work at site and in the labs with uh, respect to water quality and, and acid rock drainage to make sure that we're, we're okay on that stuff. And it is actually very good with, with the, the acid rock potential. There's uh, so far, all the test work has shown to be non-acid generating. And in fact, the waste rock is, is even suitable for construction aggregate. So uh, the potential use for that rock in the future. Um, but no, it's, uh, it's going really well. And it's, we've, we've got a development project and we also have a uh, significant exploration upside that we're we're kind of doing both at the same time but we have a nice starter project that, that we're pushing forward on uh, with hammer down as well so yeah it's been going really well garrett you also have an agreement with rambler metals and mining for um nugget pond gold circuit this is a uh, a plant a proven plant with 90 uh 97 plus percent gold recovery that's currently idle that a lot of investors are not really under, uh, uh, unaware of this and don't understand the significance of having this agreement. Yeah, so after the PEA study in uh, at the end of February, we announced an agreement with Rambler to evaluate uh, the, the Nugget Pond Gold Circuit. So this is a plant that was idle, uh, has been idle for a number of years. It last ran uh, when it processed hammer down feed. So it's a, it's a well understood and proven plan with high recoveries, very straightforward, kind of a relatively simple CIP circuit um, that leaches the ore from, from the veins uh, with very high recoveries over 97 to 98%. So the agreement we did with Rambler basically is an exclusivity agreement with the option to negotiate a purchase of that plant. So we're, we're going through the steps now, we're evaluating that uh, in a bit more detail. But it's a great asset to have locally. It also, I think, speeds up our um, our process of getting to cash flow as quick as we can by using what we have available rather than starting something brand new. Um, limits our environmental impact. It keeps uh, you know jobs in the area. So yeah, so far so good with that as well. And hopefully we're uh, you know on track for permitting probably later in uh, in this year or early next year. Well, you know, it's been a, an exciting time in the gold sector. We've seen a rise in the gold price. You know, when you did the PAA, I think you did it at 1500 and Now gold's at $1,800. Um, we have also seen so much M&A on this eastern coast. We saw Dalradian, which I believe Maritime has some people working on it that worked on, on, on uh, Dalradian. If you could highlight the excitement and Atlantic gold was recently uh, taken out by the Australians. Uh, I think uh, St. Barbara, St. Barbara, if you could highlight the re recent M and A and excitement uh, in the Newf Newfoundland jurisdiction and some of the people on your team that have been successful in the past. Yeah. So yeah, the East coast of Canada is definitely uh getting a lot more attention lately. Um, there's immense mineral potential in, in the whole area, in Newfoundland in particular. Uh, you know, we're, we're, we're operating our assets and all of our exploration work within a, you know, mining jurisdiction. So we have access to, to great deposits. We have you know, high grades. We have infrastructure, local labor that's uh, well-trained. You know, a lot of the people in Newfoundland uh, are the labor source for, for mines all around Canada. So there's great skills locally and the province is very progressive and interested in, in resource development. So we've got a great thing going there. We, we like working there. Um, yeah, you mentioned Dow Radian. So I was uh, a few years ago working on that one. I led the feasibility study uh, for it as a consultant uh, with JDS Mining. And most recently, we added a, a new advisor to our team at Maritime. It's the, uh, the chief operating officer of Dalridian, who um, will bring a lot of great 
you know, experience to the table as a, as a mine builder, as a mine operator. And, uh, you know, most, most recently with Dalradian being a, a very similar deposit to, to hammer down. So yeah, it's great. We've got a good team starting to form and working in a province that actually uh, embraces mining. So it's, it's been very good. Um, Garrett, as we conclude here, there's been a lot of excitement in Newfound in Newfoundland. A lot of junior minor mining companies that have recently raised money or may, or maybe uh, IPOing. What what should investors know about Maritime that makes it different and unique than some uh, so many other stories that are coming now later to the game? Well, I think it's a combination of of a number of things that that any one of them would be good, uh, but we have everything happening all at once. So we have a a very high grade deposit uh, with measured indicated resources over nine grams. We have exploration potential in in many areas, dealing with you know a, a historic mine that operated with a cutoff grade of over eight grams during the time when gold prices were three to four hundred dollars an ounce. So we're dealing with what's left, and what we're finding is is uh, a lot of mineralization that uh, that we can put through a local process plant using local labor. Um, the gold price certainly helps us, and you know we could be in production, um, you know, within say the next 18 months at a rate of around 70,000 ounces per year for a very low capital cost. And our PA was identified at uh, 57 million Canadian. So everything uh, combined, you've got a, a high, high grade, high margin, low capital project with exploration upside in a province that actually wants mining. So I guess that's my, my takeaway is that all those things are working together to give a, a very, very compelling story to, to investors. Yeah, and there's not, we have a gold market at it's breaking into new highs, and this uh, this deposit I was was once Richmond uh, back in and stopped in two thousand four when gold prices were at four hundred. So it's a it's a huge difference right now uh, with Mar with this project at these prices and with this team. Before we conclude, uh, I forgot to mention about the shareholder support. You recently raised a significant amount of money. And you have a great roster of shareholders, and I, I think it really is important for investors to to see uh, who's behind the company and the and that the support that will can take a project forward uh, to the next level. If you could highlight that, that would be greatly appreciated. Yeah, no, it's, it's a very important point too. Having having the right team of investors behind a company is important. We're we're benefit. We benefit by having some some well-known investors. Um, Dundee Goodman Merchant Partners uh, owns roughly 18 to 19 percent of Maritime, and uh, Sprott Sprott Capital and Sprott Asset Management also own a significant piece of of Maritime in the order of around 17 percent between those two entities. And as well, we have 1832 Asset Management. And it's Rob Cohen in Toronto. So three three big institutions that own uh, nearly 40 percent of the company. Um, but it's been great, though. It's uh, they're very helpful, and, and we work work well uh, work well together. And uh, you know, it's been very good. And they're always there for for financing when we when we need, and with all, also with uh, technical and you know marketing support as well. So today we're talking with Garrett McDonald, who's who is the president and CEO of Maritime Gold. Uh, which can be traded as MAE on the TSX venture. Venture, it can you can get more information at Maritime Resource Resources Corp. dot com. You can also call uh, their Toronto office at four one six three six five five three two one. It's uh, an exceptional technical team and great shareholders. Uh, we expect to see a lot of drill here, a lot of drilling news going forward and and development. Uh, at Hammerdown Project in New Newfoundland, and a lot, a lot of interest uh, coming into Newfoundland too from in, from the junior mining community. So keep a close eye on Maritime Resources, Maritime Gold, which can be traded as MAE on the TSX venture. And thank you, Garrett, once again for 
being here with us today and for giving us an update. That's great. Thank you, Jeff. I appreciate it.